you know, he's listen. That article was devastating. I mean, I'm a. I've never listen. LeBron got a lot of power. I mean, he deserves it. I mean, listen, Magic, Bird, LeBron, uh, Michael. There's probably only four or five players who I've ever played against or been watching for the last 30 years to have some type of power. Let's be realistic. Because, well, you, you know, you talk about number one guys who are uh, – this guy, they say he's always late. Which That's like my number one pet peeve. you got to be on time because if you're late one time or two times, that's that's all right. But if you're late all the time, you just say, I don't care about the players. I don't care about the coach. I'm just going to do it my way. But when you talk about trading players, like – that's amazing to have that type of power, and uh, like I say, I don't I don't remember Bird, Magic, Michael, uh, uh, LeBron probably has some, but I don't think LeBron would abuse the way it seems like James was abusing that system in Houston. That was that's crazy. Yeah, Chuck, it's 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 pretty wild, and I look it, and, and as I said, you know, and I know because I've been knowing you for a long time. When we played, yes, we took care of business on the court as well as on the field if we wanted to have some extracurricular time, but we didn't show up late to practices. We did the things that we needed to do within our team. With that being said, what is the perfect landing spot for James Harden if he's moved and when he's moved? Well, number one, I want to see James, KD, and Kyrie together with that New York media. That's just my dream scenario. Uh, that's what I want. Hey, listen, Key. I want that more than anything in the world because <laughs> you guys know all three of those guys are number one. I, I don't know any of them really well. I think they're all three uh, good guys, but I think they all three got some issues. And I cannot wait to see those three guys play together because uh, I think it would be fascinating because. All three of them need the ball and want the ball, and I just don't think it will work. But I want to see it because I want to see it implode. Listen, if I'm New Jersey, uh, Brooklyn, give me that kid with the afro who I like a lot, uh, Allen. <laughs> give me Dinwiddie and give me Levert and let the Rockets go forward with a really pretty good solid team. Um, I take that trade tomorrow uh, if if I'm Brooklyn. Uh, or, or the Rockets, excuse me, if I'm the Rockets. Because, like I say, you give me Allen, Dinwiddie, and Levert, I'm like, and you got John Wall now, we're just as good as we were going to be, but we're not going to have that drama, and we'd have a pretty solid team. Because uh, James clearly does, does not want to be there. See, my thing with the James thing is, I don't know if he can play in another system. That's what, to me, was going to be fascinating to watch if and when he gets traded, can he only play that one way? And this notion that, like, well, if he goes somewhere, no, he's played the exact same way for six or seven years. He's not going to get to Brooklyn and say, well, I'm going to stand around and watch James and Kyrie, excuse me, Kyrie and Kevin. Like, I want the ball. So I, I think that's what's going to be fascinating wherever James go. Because I think he can only play one way. And, and, and number one, it ain't fun to watch. And he's the best offensive player I've ever seen. But I'm not going to stand around and just watch him dribble the whole time. That's no fun. And I guarantee you Kyrie and KD ain't going to sit around and watch that. Big Brother Chuck, take me to the, take me to the, the Brooklyn scenario. First off, I haven't heard you talk about how Kyrie uh, – had his boycott of the media a few days ago, and how ultimately you think this scenario, understanding personality traits, will work out between Kyrie and KD in a major market like New York City with the way the media is always looking to hang on to some type of action? You know, Kyrie is uh, hes interesting. I don't know what's going on with that scenario. Uh, it's like he's, he's – I'm not sure what he's doing. Uh, I don't like it. You know, they don't pay you $40 million just to play basketball. Part of it is sitting down with you guys, uh, uh, you know, sitting down with me and Kenny and Ernie and Jet, uh, talking to New York reporters. 
being with the media is part of your professional obligation. And you can say what you want to say. Uh, you know, but, you know, these guys today, they're different. Uh, I, I don't hate on them. But I'm not sure what point Kyrie is trying to make. Uh I'm, and when he talks, I'm like, what the hell is he trying? What is he saying and what is he trying to say? Listen, guys, I think a lot of these guys, he starts talking about what an artist he is. He's a basketball player. That's what he is. We're, we, listen, we're, we're, not, uh, in the, we're not trying to, we're not front line responders. We're not teachers. Yo, man, you dribble a basketball. Stop acting like you're the smartest person in the world. Now, can you talk about social issues and things like that? Of course. But some of that other stuff, I'm like, yo, man, you do realize you're just a basketball player, right? Uh, and it seems like he's like, no, I want you guys to know I'm the smartest guy in the room. I'm like, well, first of all, you're not. You only went to college for six months. A lot of player, a lot of guys are smarter than you are. Just answer stupid basketball questions. And if you want to say something about social justice, say it and mean it because it's important and significant. But all that other stuff, like, yo, man, shut the hell up. And- yeah, a few days ago. And how ultimately you think this scenario, understanding personality traits will work out between Kyrie and KD in a major market like New York City with the way the media is always looking to hang on to some type of action? You know, Kyrie is, uh, he's interesting. I don't know what's going on with that scenario. Uh, it's like he's, hes I, I'm just not sure what he's doing. Uh, I don't like it. You know, they don't pay you $40 million just to play basketball. Part of it is sitting down with you guys, uh, uh, you know, sitting down with me and Kenny and Ernie and Jet. Uh, talking to New York reporters, being with the media is part of your professional obligation. And you can say what you want to say. Uh, you know, but, you know, these guys today, they're different. Uh, I, I don't hate on them. But I'm not sure what point Kyrie is trying to make. Uh I'm, and when he talks, I'm like, what the hell is he trying? What is he saying and what is he trying to say? Listen, guys, I think a lot of these guys, he starts talking about what an artist he is. He's a basketball player. That's what he is. We're, we, listen, we're, we're, not, uh, in the, we're not trying to, we're not front line responders. We're not teachers. Yo, man, you dribble a basketball. Stop acting like you're the smartest person in the world. Now, can you talk about social issues and things like that? Of course. But some of that other stuff, I'm like, yo, man, you do realize you're just a basketball player, right? Uh, and it seems like he's like, no, I want you guys to know I'm the smartest guy in the room. I'm like, well, first of all, you're not. You only went to college for six months. A lot of player, a, a lot of guys are smarter than you are. Just answer stupid basketball questions. And if you want to say something about social justice, say it and mean it because it's important and significant. But all that other stuff, like, yo, man, shut the hell up. 